So hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar on five ways to manage your school business online. This webinar is brought to you by Teacherman to Fish. We are an educational charity based in the United Kingdom whose mission is to empower young people with the skills they need to succeed in school, work and in life. My name is Paula and with me today is my colleague India and together we'll be co-hosting today's session. So India, if you'd like to say hello again. Hello everyone. Um, some of you may know me from previous webinars that I have run. I'm part of the Teacher Man to Fish team based in the UK. Amazing, thank you India. And yes, we are both part of a Teacher Man to Fish team and we work on our wonderful educational program, the School Enterprise Challenge. For those of you who haven't taken part yet, the School Enterprise Challenge gives young people the chance to become entrepreneurs whilst still at school. Participants in the program get to plan, set up and launch a real business. And in the process, they learn, of course, about business skills and, and business topics, but they also develop a wide range of life skills, such as communication, teamwork, problem solving and leadership. So for today's session, we really want to make the most of our time together and for you to get as much as you can out of today's session. So your participation in the group activities and via the chat box will make all the difference. So we really, we really encourage you with India to get actively involved. So let's have a look at some ground rules that we always start every session with. So you'll notice that most of you should be on mute at the moment. And it's mainly because we have a number of people in the session today. We cannot be all speaking at the same time, but don't worry because there'll be plenty of opportunities for you to interact and share your insights, experience and thoughts with your colleagues in the session today. At regular points in the webinar, we will be asking questions. So you're welcome to answer them via the chat box, or you can also raise your hand and then we'll invite you to unmute and you can share your video as well, so you can share your insights or you answer the questions that we'll be posing or sharing with you. As we said at the beginning, it'd be great if we can get to know each other a little bit better. So please carry on introducing yourself and telling us where you are joining from today. And if you've done that, you know, we usually like to know how are you feeling today? This evening, this afternoon, what's the feeling for the session? We usually have a lot of excitement, hopefully. Um, looking forward to you, you tell us, how are you feeling today? And let me have a look at the chat so we know who we have with us and how you are all feeling. So I can see people from Sri Lanka, Mumbai, Sri Lanka, India from South Africa, amazing, amazing. From Pakistan as well. Thank you, everyone. India, you can help me if I'm missing any message. Excited, excited from Ghana as well. Amazing, great. Yeah, as we said before, remember the chat is a place where you can get to interact in today's section, session, sorry. This is all about you, all about the learning you'll take away from our conversation today on this hour and a half that we have together. So please do try to make the most out of it. And feeling sleepy, well, hopefully we'll wake you up. Hopefully Jobel will wake you up with all the energy for today's session. Great, so as we said before, you, there'll be plenty more opportunities for you to interact. So let's have a look at what we'll be covering today. So as I said before, we'll have up to an hour and a half together. And the overall aim of the webinar today is to build your confidence as a teacher to support your students when carrying out their activities, the business activities in the online world. So we'll be sharing with you practical tools that you can use to adapt your lessons and school business activities so you can successfully continue running your school business. And we know we might be at different levels today. Some of you are, are, are experts already on these tools, while some of you might be still learning them. So please bear with us while we introduce them, because you might be at different levels, but that's the beauty of this session where you can get to interact with your colleagues and learn from each other. 
And remember, this is an interactive session, so your full attention and participation will be key and will make all the difference and you'll get the most of our time together. As we usually do on every webinar, at the end of the webinar, we are going to be sharing a link to a survey. And when you complete the survey, you can download your certificate of attendance. We will also be sharing the presentation slides and a list of useful resources with you via email after today's session. So you don't need to take notes or don't worry because you won't be missing things. A heads up for today's session, it'll be jam packed with links and useful resources for you to check in your own time. So you'll see on the presentation slides today that everything has been hyperlinked. So you can go back when you get the presentation slides on your email and then click and explore further what that all is about. So don't worry again about missing things. Everything will be delivered to you as a follow-up after today's session. Okay, enough with all the starting and, and getting ready for today's session. So before we go deeper or we dive deeper into tools and examples, let's recap on what is a school business, right? For those of you who might not be familiar with the School Enterprise Challenge or haven't taken part before. So the School Enterprise Challenge is our award-winning experiential learning program, which will guide you as a teacher and your students to come up with a business idea, create a business plan and launch and run your school business. So students become young entrepreneurs selling real products or services to real people. How to do this? You don't need to worry because our educational resources will support you as a teacher to guide your students the whole way through the process. And through the program, as we said before, your students will develop key life skills, such as communication, problem solving, teamwork, and leadership. It's completely free to take part. And this year we introduced lots of exciting new features to offer for you to run the best school business possible, whatever your circumstances. And today's sessions, we know it's been one that is being on demand, or it's been re requested by so many teachers and that's why we put together all the tips and is these fantastic tools for you to run your online school business. So you can find out more to register and still take part this year through the website, which is www.schoolenterprisechallenge.org. So that will be our umbrella, that will be our context for today's session for you to successfully run the school business with your students. So let's get started. So we recognize that COVID-19 pandemic changed our day-to-day -day lives and challenged us in different ways. It forced us to be flexible, to innovate and adapt in ways we've never have imagined. So in the session today, we'd like to share with you some digital tools that can help you make the difference to you and your students when managing your school business activities. So we divided these tools into five different categories. And those are, the first one is about video conferencing tools. Now we are going to briefly explain and have a look at Microsoft Teams, Google Meet, and Zoom, which again, we know most of you are very familiar with. Just wanted to recap and start from the basics. The second one is, um, we are going to explore some survey tools such as Google Forms and Survey Monkey. The next thing is all about collaboration tools. There we have a look at Padlet, Jamboard, Miro, and Zoom Whiteboard. The fourth category will be looking at financial planning and reporting tools, and mainly having a look at Google Spreadsheets. And the last one will be about mobile payment and e-commerce platforms, such as Shopify, Paytm, and Momo, which we understand is both in Nigeria and Ghana. That's a learning from this week's session. And as you might have seen, please do consider that this is um, the list and the categories are not exhaustive, right? This is our selection of the best tools available at the moment that we believe we will make all the difference when supporting you and your students to run your school business activities. And this is based on our experience 
of what we learned from schools around the globe running the school businesses in the school enterprise challenge. So let's have a look together one by one at these five categories. Great, thank you, Paula, for the introduction. So um, I'm gonna go through the first set of tools on the list, which is online video conferencing tools. I'm sure after the pandemic, many of you are familiar with these. So online video conferencing tools um, will allow you to work effectively with your team of students, no matter where you are all located. Of course, we recognize that there might be some challenges with internet connection, depending on the co your context and the country where you're based. But video conferencing tools make conversations more effective because you can see each other face to face and read body language better. So the possibility to have these quick chats with remote team members helps to build relationships, improve team communication, and effectiveness. So there are three main video conferencing tools which we wanted to share with you today, and all of them are free or they have a free version. So they are, first of all, Microsoft Teams. This one is a great tool for chatting, meeting, and collaborating all in one place. It's part of the Microsoft suite and it can be accessed from your web browser, from a desktop application, or even through a mobile app. So with Teams, you can conduct one-on-one -on -one or group audio and video calls. You can also share your screen during web conferencing for better collaboration, schedule meetings, and record meetings so you can refer back to them later. Then secondly, we have Google Meet. So anyone with a Google account can create an online meeting with up to 100 participants and meet for up to 60 minutes. Schools, businesses and other organizations can also take advantage of advanced features like meetings with more people, live streaming, even up to 100,000 viewers. And then finally, there's Zoom, which of course is what we're using today for this session. So Zoom also enables you to virtually interact with anyone when in-person meetings are not possible. So it's also been hugely successful, especially over the pandemic for social events too. So now that we all know what each of these tools are for, let's have a quick look at what we could use them for in the context of your school business. And some of these things might be ideas that you've had already or maybe have experience of, some of them I think are quite creative, so hopefully will inspire you with some new ideas today. So you can use um, these sorts of online video conferencing tools for your weekly team meetings with your students, of course. You could also use them to organize an induction ceremony to formally welcome and celebrate any new members of your business team this year. You could also use them for running an online fundraiser. So your students could put on an online event like a quiz or a music performance or an exercise class, depending on what their skill set is, and then sell tickets to raise startup capital to fund their business idea. Similarly, you could run a different type of event. You could do a launch event to celebrate, um, showcase and spread the word about your new business to all your potential customers. And you can also use these tools for market research to organize focus group discussions. So let's now have a look um, at a few of these examples from Kathari International School in India. So we can see on this slide, um, in the picture, some of the school business team members are holding up to the camera the work that they've done at home on their organizational structure, their team structure. So this is a really nice way, as you can see, for students to do, to work through the school business activities individually from home and then share the results with their team members um, and collaborate on it together. 
So um, before we move on to look at the second category, which is survey tools, I wanted to ask, I'm sure many of you in the audience might have some experience of using these tools, MS Teams, Google Me, or Zoom, for working with your students on the School Enterprise Challenge over the last few months. Um, if anyone has any experience of that and would like to share it with the audience, please um, feel free to share your experience by typing it now in the chat box, or you can raise your hand um, so we can invite you to unmute and share live. I'm really interested to know if you have um, experience of doing any of the things that I mentioned, like team meetings, online fundraisers, market research, or maybe a different example, a different way of using these tools. It would be great to hear about them. Definitely, thank you, India. If anything, this is a category that we believe you are all already experts on, right? So if anybody would like to share any other example from the list that we mentioned or any other way which you are familiar already with Zoom, Microsoft Teams or Google Meets, which in the end they all serve the same purpose. It's just, they are just different platforms, right? Uh, so I can see Fosia and Habib, girls of school, we have used Zoom to conduct workshops with our customers regarding the use of our products. Amazing. That's another one to add then, conducting workshops. And Janet is adding that they use G Meet, Google Meet. Amazing. And would you like to share, Janet, in the chat, if you like, how do you use Google Meet? How do, how do you, what do you use it for? So we can learn a few more examples. Great. So while you do that, we can move on to the second one because this first and second category are closely related to each other. So let's have a look at then at these survey tools. And if you've taken part in the School Enterprise Challenge before, you might remember and know that doing market research involves finding out information about your customers, the market you will be operating in, and your competitors. But if you don't have experience in this, don't worry because our business guide number five will explain in detail how you can do all this. So we know in a normal school setting, and when it's safe to go in the local area, we recommend you carry out the market research in person. For example, by carrying out a survey or focus group discussion with potential customers and visiting your competitors. But if you are teaching online, rather than in person, we recommend you carry out the same market research activities online or by telephone instead. So you could do this by using a free simple survey tool like Google Forms and SurveyMonkey for your market research survey. So let's have a look at these two, which again are quite similar, but different in a sense. So with Google Forms, mainly you can easily create any survey that contains as many questions as you might need to ask in a variety of ways. You can plan an event and you can get anonymous answers to tough questions if you need to, or you can do whatever you need to in terms of service or asking questions through this platform. Whereas SurveyMonkey is a great tool to easily create surveys, surveys, sorry, quizzes and polls for any audience. You can also gather feedback by a web link email, mobile chat, social media, and some other platforms. And you can automatically analyze your results or integrate your data with your favorite app. The analyzing results come really handy and key here, and both actually tools, both tools can help you do that. So if we think about these tools and we link them back to video conference tools, you could actually organize a online focus group discussion on Zoom, Google Meets or uh, um, Microsoft Teams or Skype. And you can even try recruiting participants through social media or local Facebook and WhatsApp group in your community. So you can multi-channel and integrate all the different tools um, to conduct your different activities. And remember that it's not only about going out and understanding your customers, but it's also about learning from your competitors and considering your competitors on your market survey. 
So you can carry out your competitor analysis online by looking at your competitor's website, social media channel, and online reviews when they are available. As we did before, let's have a look at real examples from schools on how they've been using these tools to conduct their market research activities. So we continue with the same school, this time Kosari International School Business Team members. They are showing on a screen on a Zoom conference call uh, a market research question they individually came up with. So they share with us the process that they follow, which we are going to share today with you, because we thought it was really thoroughly explained step by step how they conducted the market research in this online world. So let's have a look at it together. Firstly, they conducted a meeting with the students on Zoom and asked students to identify potential target customers and come up with one question to be asked to them. That's the screenshot that we've seen on the other slide. One question each. Then the students were divided into four groups and discussed a question they could ask. Each group gave one question in the form of multiple choice on a chart paper and presented it to the other groups. Step four was about creating a questionnaire with a set of 10 questions on a Google form and they created the link. And then that link was shared among the students and they further shared it with at least five unknown potential customers in the local area. So each student share, re shared that link with five unknown potential customers. So the sample size for them was, there were 17 students time five unknown customers. They actually survey 85 potential customers. Then they make sure that whatever the Google form all the data from the Google form was connected to an Excel sheet. So all the responses of the target customers were recorded. So they made sure that they can actually analyze all that information and it's available to them. Then they held a second meeting to analyze that data that they collected and they converted it into a pie chart and they came to the conclusion in this example that 75% of potential customers gave them positive responses and 25% weren't up very interested. And they also decided to conduct, to conduct, sorry, a focus group discussion with 10 parents. And they also came up with a set of 10 short questions um, which were discussed an online meeting with these 10 randomly selected parents. So this is, again, another way that we wanted to share with you, describing in detail, step-by-step, step, how you can conduct your market research survey, if it's not in person, online, through the use of Google Forms. So let's have a look at another example, this time from Suraj Ban, DAB Public School in India. And the business idea is decorative handicrafts from waste material, dry eatables, and stationary items. So. I'm going to read now an extract from the business plan because there are three key elements here that we wanted to share with you. So this is what the students wrote on the business plan. For market research during the pandemic, an in-depth survey was conducted for evaluation of the dealers, vendors, interest groups, competitors, etc. The research was performed with the help of three different methods. A Google form survey, which was shared with the students, parents, teacher, and alumni. Personal interview carried out virtually on Zoom and through social media platforms. And they wrote, according to research, to the research conducted via Google Forms, stories put on social media and through virtual Zoom meetings with customers, again, the three method methods combined together, we discovered that the reason people are buying our products constantly is because of the good quality and competitive price of our products, besides the availability of other brands in the market. You can see collecting data, using different tools, analyzing and drawing conclusions from that data. They also use social media to promote their products. And they say, we posted photos, a brief description, and information about our specialties to convince customers to buy our products and intensify our sales further. 
So you can see on the screen over there a few stories on Instagram on how they conducted market research on social media platforms to understand preferences and what customers like from their products. So there we are with two fantastic examples on how you could be using Google Forms and SurveyMonkey alongside some video conference tools combined in these two different categories to find out more about your market research. And again, we think with India that this is another category where you are very familiar with, right? We know the majority of the schools that have been taking part in the School Enterprise Challenge have been conducting online market research. So I'll come back to you again. Do you have any different example or anything that you like to add in a way that has been different from what we share, quite similar, you did the same, uh, how that worked out for you? Please do so in the chat. And I'm going to just pause for a moment to catch up if I miss anything. Did I miss anything in the chat, India? Hmm. Um, so some of the teachers have been sharing while you were talking about how their experience of using these sorts of tools already, which is fantastic to hear. So Fusia says that they used SurveyMonkey even before COVID and that they have found it's been really effective in terms of contacting the survey population and analyzing the results. Um, and Evans said that they use Google Forms to know the response of clients on their products. Um, and then Kalpana was sharing that they've also created Instagram pages. They use that them for promoting their product and selling too. Amazing. Thank you very much, everyone, for sharing. And thank you, India, for helping me catching up on, on what's been shared in the chat. Amazing. Exactly. We, we know from experience, again, that this is these two are tools that you've been, you've been working on and you are really familiar with. Great, so let's move on to the third category, right? Which is all about collaboration tools. So back to you, India. Thank you, Paula. So onto collaboration tools, um, which are of course, tools to help a group of individuals to work together to accomplish a common goal or objective. So you may be familiar with collaboration tools of a non-technological nature, like paper, flip charts, post-it notes, and whiteboards, and the sorts of things that we use in workshops for brainstorming and so on. Um, but they can also include software tools and applications that we can use for collaborating online. So these online collaboration tools are web-based applications that offer basic services such as instant messaging for groups, mechanisms for sharing files, and the ability to do all of these things that you might be familiar with doing on paper, like brainstorming with sticky notes or drawing a mind map. But nowadays we can do all of those things digitally and remotely. So there are tons of um, online collaboration tools available. And we just wanted to draw your attention to four of them today. And I'll go through them now one by one. So the first one is called Padlet. A Padlet is a free online tool. The best way to think of it is as an online notice board. So Padlet can be used by students and by you as teachers to post notes on a common page. And these notes can um, contain links, videos, images, um, audio files, documents, all sorts of things. Um, and just a moment, I'll show you a video so you can see it in action, how Padlet looks. Then the second one is called Jamboard. Jamboard is a Google product and it's a really simple digital interactive whiteboard. So you can use it for writing and drawing. You can also upload pictures and share it with team participants so they can brainstorm and collaborate on school business activities together. As I say, Jamboard is quite a simple, basic one. Um, so it's a good one to start with if your students don't have any experience of these sorts of tools. Then we have Miro. Um, which is similar to Jamboard. It's also a digital whiteboard, but Miro is a bit more advanced. Um, it's got lots of templates that you can use um, and more advanced features for online collaboration. 
And then finally, we have Zoom whiteboard. So this is a Zoom feature, which allows you to share a whiteboard um, that you and other participants can annotate on. So you can use it for um, doing activities and games live with your students in a Zoom meeting, they can annotate on the screen. So as I said, I, I wanted to now to show you this video, um, which is 10 uses for Padlet in the classroom. So you can learn more about how you could use it with your students. Amazing. Can you still see my screen? Let's go for it. Padlet is a free online virtual bulletin board that allows students to collaborate, reflect, share links, pictures, and information, and more. Here are 10 classroom uses for Padlet. Number one, Padlet is a great tool for brainstorming and sharing ideas. Students in a class or group can contribute their ideas to one central online location. The brainstorming Padlet can then be saved and revisited later. Number two, Padlet can also be used to conduct surveys and votes. Using the reactions functionality, teachers can post several options, then have students like or upvote the ones they wish to choose. Number three, because Padlet gets updated in real time, it's a great way to collect and communicate class or school announcements. Just share the link with the class or on school social media and everyone's informed. Number four, for independent reading, students can use Padlet to highlight quotes, discuss characters, ask questions, review books, and more. Number five, Padlet allows teachers and students to summarize a topic and present the information in an attractive way using text, photos, graphs, and other learning tools. Number six, Padlet is a great way to celebrate birthdays and say thank you to guest speakers. Just create and design a Padlet and have students post their well wishes or thank yous. Number seven, if paper graphic organizers have gotten stale, Padlet can liven them up. Main idea and details, Freyer models, Venn diagrams, all can be converted into collaborative Padlets. Number eight, Padlet is a great platform for competitions such as photo contests. Students post photos and other students evaluate the photos to determine a winner. Number nine, students and groups can access their own Padlet to collaboratively create paperless multimedia posters that can then be presented to the class. Number 10, Padlet provides an effective platform for students to build portfolios of their work. No need to keep a folder, just post portfolio contents as they are created. There are many more ways to use Padlet. For ideas, check out the Padlet gallery at Great, thank you, Paula. So um, let's now have a look at a couple of examples of these tools in action by School Enterprise Challenge participants. So this first one that you can see on screen is a screenshot from the student business team at King's College in India. Um, and in this picture, you can see the students are having a Zoom meeting and they're using Zoom whiteboard to brainstorm ideas of how they could spend their profits. And then um, going back to Padlet, this next example comes from the school business team at Mount Abu Public School, also in India. So in the School Enterprise Challenge this year, their lead teacher, Vinita, has been experimenting with great success using this interactive whiteboard to coordinate her team. She found that Padlet has worked as a really effective communication and collaboration tool. So she uses it to share worksheets with her students, which they can download. Um, they work on them offline and then they upload the um, completed worksheets back to Padlet so everyone can see them. As I mentioned before, it's not just files that you can upload, but you can also upload pictures, um, videos and audio files. So it's really flexible. And Vanita says that this tool has allowed her team to organize their activities in a really transparent way. So the whole team can learn from each other and see what everyone's doing. Um, as you'll see on screen, that link, it's a hyperlink. So when we share the slides with you after today's session, 
you can click on that link um, and go and check it out for yourself and see how um, they're using Padlet for organizing their school business activities. So um, over back and over to you again, we'd love to know, do you have a different example of how your students are using any of these sorts of collaboration tools like Padlet, Jamboard, Miro or Zoom whiteboard? Are you using any of these sorts of things um, to coordinate your own school business activities? We would love to hear about it. So again, please do share your experiences in the chat or raise your hand and we will invite you to unmute yourself and share live with the group. Thank you, India. This could be a great opportunity for us to stop talking and somebody <laughs> else to share their first hand experience. So again, we think we know some of you are already using Padlet. We are not sure about Jamboard. Um, you, you might have experienced that one on one of our webinars a few weeks ago. So if you'd like to share how you've been using this, any of these tools, either on the chat box or raise your hand, you know you're welcome to unmute yourself and, and share your experience with us. Okay, well, we can get some of you. Um, okay, amazing. Thank you, Janet. So Janet's saying they use Jamboard to invite students to solve problems. And Kalpana is adding Padlet, Jamboards. Okay, both Padlet and Jamboards. Amazing. As India was explaining, Jamboard is really, really simple. And it works like these sticky notes and you can add images as well. It's um, all of these are visual tools, right? They help you brainstorm and collaborate as per the category they're in. Great, so let's have a look at the next one then, um, which is all about financial tools. And if there's anything, the number one financial tool we like to share with you today is Google Spreadsheets. Because it's Google Spreadsheets make your life really easy in terms of popping up colorful chats or pivot tables or formulas. And let me just come back to the presentation. There we are. Um, and save and make you, help you to save time and simplify common spreadsheet task. It's free to use. And we think it's a fantastic tool for you to use with your students when you work on your school business finances to help you estimate your income, cost and profit collaboratively allowing the team of students to work on the same version of a document in real time and at the same time. And I was sharing before the, earlier this week, like this is exactly, this is one of the tools that we use at Teachment Officials and Organization to work on our budgets and all our finances are on Google Spreadsheets so we can all collaboratively work in different countries, but on the same document at the same time. So how powerful is that? Right. So one special thing for you to consider on Google Spreadsheets is that there are actually building templates that you can go and have a look and you can just adapt as you need to. So you don't need to create things from scratch. If you are taking part in the school business, a school enterprise challenge, sorry, running your school business, you know, there are a few templates that we share with you. You can easily bring them as a table on Google Spreadsheets. So again, this is us recommending one tool to you. But have you used it before? We know some of you might have used the Word documents and share them on um, Zoom sessions or, or team session together. But have you used any of the Google spreadsheets to work out your finances and the school business? And if you do so, it'd be great if you like to share it in the chat or if you can share it in the chat. So we learn from you as well. And next time we add it to our suite of examples. Great, so while you do that and think about it, I'm going to move on to the fifth and last category, India. Great, thank you, Paula. Um, so the fifth and final category is mobile payment and e-commerce tools. So whether you're teaching in school or online, of course, you'll need to consider COVID-19 when you create your marketing and sales plan. 
especially when you think about where you will sell your product or service and how you will promote it. So today we would like to share with you some examples of tools that you could use to facilitate this um, sales process and receive online payments. So the first one is Shopify. Shopify is a subscription-based software that allows anyone to set up an online store and sell their products. It's a commerce platform that offers a way for you to quickly launch your business and start selling to your customers wherever they are. The next one, in fact, the next two are mobile payment tools. So first of all, we have Paytm, which is available in India. So Paytm stands for Pay Through Mobile, and it's known as India's most loved payments app. I'm sure those of you in India will be familiar with it already. So it's an easy way to send and receive money. And you can also use Paytm to pay bills, open a savings account and do lots more. Then we have Momo, which is available in Nigeria and Ghana. So Momo is an acronym for mobile money. Um, it allows registered agents to perform transactions for customers. So um, it allows cash transfers to people who don't have a bank account. Um, and agents can carry out cash withdrawal for customers without needing an ATM or a point of service machine. So it's a way to do to withdraw cash without a card. Now, you might be wondering, what does all this mean for my school business? Well, um, if you're not able to physically interact with your customers, you need to figure out a different way of how you could take payment and sell your product or service online directly. And that's where mobile payment and e-commerce platforms like Shopify, Paytm and Momo come in handy. Of course, I'm aware that we've got a really international audience. Um, so if you're not based in India or Nigeria or Ghana, maybe Paytm and Momo aren't available in your country. But I'm sure you might be aware of a similar service that does the same thing. So let's now take a look at, look at an example of what the students from the school business team at DAV Public School, West Patel Nagar in India have set up to continue promoting and selling their products during COVID times. So you can see on screen um, a quote from the student business team, as well as a photo of one of their products and a screenshot of a receipt um, from one of these mobile money providers. So the student said, we create this craft work with wood and waste cloths like candy pouches. We're promoting our products on WhatsApp and we've created a Paytm account for receiving payments online. We deliver our products to our customers at school during quiet hours in order to avoid crowds. We also deal with some local vendors like our parents who are ready to sell our pro products for a small margin at their grocery and gift shops, which helps us to increase our promotion and selling reach. So there you have it, a nice example of a few different tools, WhatsApp and Paytm. That's how the students at Dow Public School are managing to keep their school business uh, running and thriving this year. So then um, back over to you again. Do you have any experience of using any of these sorts of tools for selling your products online um, and receiving payment from customers online? Maybe if you're in a different country, um, you could recommend us a different provider so we can add it to our list. I can see that Evans has already mentioned Mapesa is a cashless payment method widely used in Kenya. Great to know. Uh, if you're exactly. in a different country, yeah, please also let us know. I was just going to say that I made a note to add it to our list. Thank you, India. I'm recapping on the chat and it says, um, coming back to the financial tools, Kal Kalpana said we use for financial management to keep track of costing and profits, which is great. So I think it's backing up our example. Rashmi is saying we use Padlet for taking students' views on various topics. Amazing. And Janet is adding, we use Google spreadsheets 
in entering marks and attendance. Conditional formatting is used to color the marks based on percentage. Amazing. We can we can see already if playing with few formulas on Google Sheets. Um, and then we have WhatsApp as well added. Yes, WhatsApp is definitely another platform that is ticking off the different categories that we introduced to you today as well. And Jobert is adding EcoCash. EcoCash, sorry, is a mobile network we use in Zimbabwe. Another one to the list. Amazing. Thank <laughs> you, Jobert. So we have two new ones, one in Kenya and another one in Zimbabwe. Awesome. So shall we have a look at, um, shall we recap India on all the tools that we covered already the five categories? So maybe we can just recap on everything that we've seen so far, just to, to keep them in mind. So the first one that we covered was all about video conferencing tools. Uh, we briefly introduced you to Microsoft Teams, Google Meet and Zoom. And I'm saying introducing you as a former way, right? Again, we know you've been using these tools probably uh, since last year. So you are already experts um, in the area. So you can use these ones in team meetings, induction ceremonies, online fundraisers, launch events, market research, focus group discussion, and probably a few more examples um, can be added to this list. And then we went through the survey tools and those were mainly Google Forms and SurveyMonkey, uh, mainly to conduct your market research survey activities. And then in terms of collaboration tools, we had a look together at Padlet, Shamboard, Miro, and Zoom Whiteboard, which you can use to collaborate in an online team, in online team meetings, all the three, and especially Padlet for sharing individual students' work. Those were the first three, and then we had a look at Google Spreadsheets and the financial planning and reporting. And I love that you share as well, that you use it as a teacher for your marks and this conditional formatting formula. And then uh, India introduced us to some of the mobile payment and e-commerce platforms available. And now we learned there are a few more in Kenya and Zimbabwe, but we mainly seen an example from Paytm in India, Shopify and Momo which you can use for online promotion and receive online payments. And in terms of promoting your business, remember that we might be covering that in the next webinar in terms of social media platforms available such as Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, and Twitter. So make sure you join, you join us in two weeks time and uh, yeah, stay tuned on what's coming in terms of promoting your business in the online world. So that was probably it from us talking all the time, right? That's why we invite you several times for you to raise your hand and share the space in this session with us. So in a moment, we are going to open a breakout room because this is a time for you to learn from each other and interact in the smaller groups and where you get to share your experience and what you've been doing so far with any of these tools. So I'm going to let India to introduce you to our breaker rooms. Great. Thanks, Paula. So um, what's going to happen is you will be assigned to a breakout room and moved there automatically, or you should be. Um, if not, if you see a button on screen inviting you to join the breakout room, then please do click it. At the end of the activity, you will then be moved back to the main room automatically. So um, in the breakout room, please remember to click on these buttons to turn on your microphone and your camera if you would like to. Remember, you'll only get out of this webinar what you put in. So we really encourage you to get actively involved um, and share all your experience and ideas and insights with your colleagues. So if you need assistance when you're in the breakout room, you can click on this button to ask for help and then invite host. But please only click on this um, if you really need our help because we wouldn't want to jump in and interrupt your discussions. Um, as we said at the beginning of today's session, this is like an interactive safe space where you can learn from and with your peers around the globe. Um, so, as I say, please do get involved with the discussion and just in case you're in a in a room where for some reason people aren't able to talk um, and you would like to be moved to a room where there are more people sharing, then um, you can use that button, ask for help so that we can move you. 
So um, you're going to have 15 minutes in these breakout rooms in small groups. We would invite you to share your personal experiences using any of the tools that we've covered in today's session or any other digital tool which you're using for school business activities. Um, and we'd like you to discuss together if you've used these tools in your school business. And if you have, how is your experience? Uh, what could you share with your colleagues so that you can learn from each other? I know from the chat that lots of you have lots of experience using these tools. So we're gonna give you 15 minutes in breakout rooms so that you have plenty of time to share your experiences with one another. Um, and then when we bring you back to the main room after those 15 minutes, we'll invite one or two of you to share live with, with the whole audience um, what it is that you discussed in your small groups. Amazing, thank you, India. So we are ready to go. If there's no questions, or if, if, you, if you don't have any questions so far, we'll see you back in 15 minutes. And remember, we are repeatedly saying, this is your chance to share and learn from and with each other, from each other and with your peers. So off you go, we'll see you back in 15 minutes. Welcome back. We're really interested to hear how you got on in your small groups, what insights you shared with each other. So um, please do type them in the chat. What were your main takeaways from your discussion in groups? Um, and if anybody would like to share live, then please do raise your hand so that we can invite you to unmute yourself and tell us what you discuss, tell us what you learn from your peers. Just give you a few moments to think about that and type any insights in the chat now. In the meantime, we were just saying there was a comment on Google Classrooms, right? From Fosia for collaboration, Google Classroom really works for us. Our school business team has made a Google Classroom where all members can interact, share files, and instantly, sorry, instantly meet via Google Meet. The files and documents of our business are also organized. Amazing. That's another tool that we should add to the list. Thank you for sharing. Okay. We're going to allow a few more seconds for you if you'd like to share any insights, any takeaway from that group discussion with your colleagues from different countries. You're welcome to share any insights. It's a nice insight from Fusia. The pandemic taught us how to turn our challenges into opportunities. That's what we like to hear. And then Amna is sharing, we had a year just before the pandemic when in 2019, we introduced ideas in a roadshow. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing the link. Okay, and you also use Canva, Pose is adding, yeah, that's another online tool. Comes pretty handy, especially when promoting your business. Okay, while you, continue sharing in the chat. Or again, if any of you would like to share live, you're more than welcome to do so. Just please raise your hand. Let's move on, because I'm checking the time. We said we have an hour and a half together. So let's move on to this moment where we take a step back, pause for a minute, and think about everything that we covered today, all the conversations that you had on that discussion group, with your colleagues. And if anything, we would like you to go away thinking, what is the one thing that you'll do with what you learned today? Think about that. It's good that we, learn, we are learning things and the same might happen with your teacher students, but how are we going to action that learning? What are we going to do now with 
what we learned today. So you are welcome to share in the chat. You are welcome to take this reflection question with you after today's session and think about that and plan your way through in your own time. But we just want you to pause for a moment and reflect on everything that we've been through, all those conversations, and think about one thing that you'll do with what you learned today. And while you do that, I'm going to share with you quickly some useful resources, as we mentioned at the beginning. This is a session jam pack with hyperlinks and, and external links for you to go and have a look in your own time. So remember that we are going to share the presentation and slides, so everything will be available to you uh, so you can explore further. So we share here a few links on how to set up breakout rooms in Zoom. This is kind of a behind the scenes on our webinar series where we've been using breakout rooms all the time. So you can do the same and probably you know already how to, but if not, you can click on those links. The same goes with polls in Zoom. And there's a fantastic blog post article on adapting your school businesses on digital communication and collaboration on the School Enterprise Challenge uh, blog site. So you have the link over there to go and check it. And then there are a few how to for each of the tools that we share, how to sign up and use Microsoft Teams, which again, you might know, but if not, you have a link over there handy to go and explore how to video conference with Google Meet, how to download Zoom and start using it in four simple steps, how to create a survey using Google Forms and how to use SurveyMonkey, Padlet for teachers, the best tips, tricks and ideas for your classroom. And remember, you can always come back to the video that we watched together today. What's Shamboard, sharing a whiteboard in Zoom, What's Shopify and how does Momo work in Nigeria? Just to give you a few ideas. And again, you might be based in a different country. There might be different platforms, but roughly to know that they exist and they're available to you. So as we usually do, we share our contact details, both for Teacher and Fish or the School Enterprise Challenge. Uh, and you can follow us on Twitter and social media channels uh, to, stay, to stay up to date on everything that's going on in the program. And finally, as we promised at the beginning, you can get your attendance certificate by filling in the very short survey that we are going to share with you in the chat um, now. And once you fill in the survey, it's only going to take you probably max five minutes. You can download your certificate of attendance and you know your feedback is very valuable to us, we check it all the time with India to improve our webinars as we run them. So we value your time completing that survey. So having said that, that will be it for today, right? So this is this was webinar 10th of a new series in 2021. We'll be running webinar 11 in two weeks time, and that will be on Tuesday, the 28th of September at 2 p.m. British summer time. And again, on Thursday, the 30th of September at 3.30 British summer time. You can find the links. We are going to share everything on a follow-up email. But again, if you follow us on social media, you'll know we are going to be sharing the links to register over there. So let me recap briefly. India, have I missed anything in the chat? Um, no, just some really nice takeaways of what everyone's going to do after this session. Um, Janet says that she's going to reach out to her students in a better and more effective way. Um, Babatunde says they'll start hosting classes online using one of the tools, preferably Google Meet. Um, what else did we have? Dolly's going to try these things on her learners. And Amanda was just commenting on um, how practical these tools are. So thank you very much, everyone, for your kind comments. We're really glad that you enjoyed it. And it's also been our pleasure to have this session today and hear from all of you about your experience. So thank you for getting involved. Definitely. Thank you. I'll echo that. Thank you. And at the same time, we are we are living with a few, um, a few other platforms, right, India, to add to our list, the one in Kenya and Zimbabwe as well, and more examples on the wonderful work that you're doing while supporting your students running their school businesses. So yeah, well done on that one. I was going to say congrats on all that fantastic work. 
and that will be it then probably we'll stay for two or three more minutes um please make sure that you grab the link to the survey so you can get your certificate of attendance and if you have any questions or anything else that you'd like to say we'll stay here for two more minutes so thank you very much once again it was wonderful having you today and we look forward to seeing you in two weeks time the next tuesday 28th and then on thursday the 30th of september <laughs>